and here we are starting the second chess session of the day this is going to be clothes and hair uh, both in general and uh, almost immediately going on to the larger project for this week name these extras and uh, put a demo group inside there and then start one group for hair one for clothes since I pretty much need to have a um, human character to demonstrate on it doesn't really make sense to draw a new one just for you know demonstration purposes so i'm just going to use use the uh, project to demonstrate and then you know do the more general demonstrations further away here and then draw the actual so stronger demonstrations directly on the character so Clothes. Let's start with clothes. Because if you imagine having um, a cloth, let's start with a t shirt. It has some sort of a structure that has been sewn onto it. So in this case, the way that I have drawn is that there is an angle between the um, part for the body and the part for um the arm this is something that's going to be um relatively um important for drawing clothes since you have some sort of clothes that have a very fitted structure to them so they have a, a the shoulder they're built into them and they will have the sleeve angled uh, very strongly down so if you are talking someone with a, uh, a business suit um, or dress shirt or that kind of you know fitted clothes uh, there is going to be less folding going on when uh, the person is just standing around but consecutively there is often a lot more folding going on when the person is actually moving Another possibility is to just have the sleeve putting onto the side. This is uh, more often the case for things like business shirts. And in this case, of course, if the person is um, holding their arm down, there is going to be movement and there is going to be movement around this area. This is where we get into the folds. So, something that's normally like this, and you turn it here, it is going to bunch up down here, and it is going to pull up here. So, you end up with folds like this. And of course, if you have a long sleeve shirt and you have it um, bent at the elbow as well, it is going to bunch up down here. So more material is going into a smaller area. And uh, it is going to tense itself against the opposite side. So you are going to have folds coming from the elbow and going into the uh into the fold of the arm here you will of course uh if you have seen some of those old uh space suits from the 50s and 60s particularly the soviet ones uh they did have this sort of uh, rubber folding here exactly because of this so they wanted to have articulation for the space suit so that it could work like this Basically, that's it. Uh, almost all of um, 
drawing clothes comes down to having a volume for it and then looking at and thinking about what is it interacting with uh, when it comes to the inner project here there's going to be uh, a body it's going to be pulled up here it's going to be pulled up here uh, since the wind is blowing in from the uh, cliff side it is going to be pushed along here and it is going to flap around here sounds easy unfortunately it's not uh, quite as easy in practice because even if you understand how it's supposed to if you generally understand how it's supposed to work it's uh, never quite as simple as the uh, elementary case for one of course there are no other folds there's going to be some sort of a probably some sort of a fold here along the arm and of course you know business shirts particularly uh, have been folded over here so you have a an amount of fabric has been turned over to begin with so you will have some folds um, along here even if the uh, arm is sitting perfectly straight so let's sketch that out a bit let's say we have the we have the buttons here and the area from here to here is straight but there has been some some folding going on on this side let's say it's gone something like this there's there's two folds we're going to have a fold come out from here and a fold come out from here then we are going to in some volume back here for the forearm now the age-old question should i be i am going to actually throw in the bones we are going to have the smaller bone here the larger bone here and of course these are going to become outside here and the nobly one here so the upper arm has to go something like this so we are going to have some extra mass here And then let's turn down the opacity on that so that I can draw on the blue one on top of it again. So maybe the buttons are going to be somewhere around here. We're going to have overlap in the uh, in the cuff, of course. But then. Going to lay down on here and of course it's going to lay down as long as there is meat and after that it's going to hang uh, hang loose a little bit so something like this we are going to have the other fold here so let's say that from this to this uh, the the back side just attaches directly here no, actually it can't. Um, it have to be a smaller area since, let's say, if, if half of the back side is, is just direct, we are going to have maybe this and this. This area behind here is going to just attach directly uh, here. Maybe it's uh, it's been tailored a bit, so it's, it's not a straight um, piece of cloth. But uh, most of the cloth is going to attach to a minority of the area. So here we have uh, two points where it con uh, it's going to fold and we have this length of area here. We would like to find out 
about one third and about one third. So somewhere around these areas is where these folds are going to come together. This is actually going to not really be that much of a demonstration. So let's say let's let's take it symmetrically from both sides. I think that's going to going to be uh, a bit better. So you have textile from here up until here, joining here, and then you have material from here up until here, joining up. Here you are going to have a lot of um, folding over, here a little bit less, here a lot, lot less, and here at the start it's just going to be just direct. So this is uh, where the hard part begins. So you have thought through how, uh, how much material you want uh, to disappear, and now you have to add think about the forces again so there's unless it is under tension it is not going to go directly this way uh it's going to lie here since it's um we are thinking of it as lying on the meat so it's going to work something like this and you are going to have a bit of uh, fold here you're probably going to have a bit of a fold here as well, but let's not think too much about that. If you want it to be quite accurate, actually, I think you should um, think about the fold here a little bit as well. And which way around is it um, folded? In this case, it would be around this way. So you would actually have a bit of um, a raised area uh, behind here where the uh, the overlap begins. So something like this. And then here it's going to drop along the meat again. Sort of follow the contour again, then drop on the meat again, and it's going to call something like this, and the rest of it is going to be more or less um, free here, but it's going to be a lot more uh, curtailed down here. So you are actually, since you have the force pulling down on it, it's going to open up a lot more. So it's going to open more aggressively than this one. Probably going to come out a bit something like this. So here we have a mess of construction lines. Let's see if we can simplify this into something that you know looks functional and looks good. Let's turn off the construction lines. Let's see. Um, looking at it from, from far enough, that's 
probably a bit bit too much. Um, let's just you know weaken the internal lines here. Keep the outline stronger. Weaken the internal lines. You know the uh, line, usual line strength management. And it's hopefully going to come out well enough. Should be about right. So then, uh, getting back to different kinds of um, of clothes. So things to remember are the attachment of different uh, components. So you, you can have some shirts that have um, sleeves that are even even angled up. I've seen this in some traditional clothes, and I think it's um, something that happens in in modern, some modern clothes as well. Possibly a bit more on the side of uh, uh, you no know, hiking wear or things like that. But um, I don't really wear that kind of things, so I'm not quite familiar with it. Then you have uh, seams, so on the uh, on the underarm, for example, or on the on the side of side of a shirt. You're going to get a strong seam on the underside, and it's going to go down uh, the side of your body. And places like this, where a lot of cloth has been folded over. For example, for business shirts, the uh, fold is something like this, and it gets uh, sewn through here. So that has a lot of material, it ends up being quite stiff. And that is the kind of thing that, um, if you have some pants on, and you have your business shirt on, even if you are holding your well, let's 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 ignore ignore the sleeves for now. Uh, this part of part here is going to be relatively stiff, so it's not going to fall like this, like you might uh, otherwise expect. It's going to make you know more of a you know angled angled way down. It's going to fold in on itself. And it's going to Is it's um, going to be bunching up here. You are likely to have some, you know, traces on the shirt like this. Because the better fitted your business shirt is, the less traces you are going to have. Uh, the extreme case of this is going to be something like spandex for superheroes or uh, road bicyclists. And in that case, it will, of course, have uh, no folds at all. Uh, the other case where you have very few folds is, again, with the uh, topic of you know, uh, suits. As uh, business suits often have a stiffening fabric in the front here. So that it is not supposed to fold at all. So ideally, if you are looking at the business suit, the front of a business suit, you're not supposed to have any any folding or bunching going on. You are supposed to have your um, arm set here. It is supposed to be stiff. It is supposed to hang almost perfectly. You are going to have some uh, bunching up around here. That's going to be inevitable. Uh, as soon as you move, or if, you, of course, if you are, if the material is something that creases a lot, like linen, it's going to be wrinkly. But uh, there's a bit of a, you know, conceptual difference between just being being wrinkly and the sort of uh, tension that arrive uh, arises from from movement. And that is the one that is more important for for drawing. You are going to have a raised collar. That is going to be stiff as well. Uh, 
at most probably you would have some um so there, there's a strengthening structure inside here traditionally this used to be made out of horse hair but i don't know what it's made out of today probably plastic so let's say if you have a, a business jacket that has this kind of strengthening but is not uh, particularly well fitted you would probably have some sort of you know tracing around here at the edge where the uh, midsection starts to turn turn away and of course uh, for people who actually wear suits and do something in them and do not just stand around there's going to be a lot of uh, tracing going on and wrinkling going on in the back that's uh, a question of interacting with things when you lean into something when you sit on something the back is going to get pressed and it is going to get more wrinkly it's going to fold over a little bit here and here and then when you do it again it's going to fold again but a little bit this time this this way around here and this time around here and the result is a wrinkly cloth Wrinkliness in itself is something that's uh, difficult to draw, particularly for me. It's a lot of huge amount of detail, and if you were a master artist, of course you would um, have some way of, of shading all of it. I don't, so if I want to draw something that's wrinkly, I'm probably just going to, you know, do the usual of... Um, using this brush to uh, texture things and then use you know some light and some dark overlay with the hard pencil here to make it look vaguely as if I have um, actually given any of this any thought you know it's more texturing than actually throwing in the uh, actual wrinkles Again, if uh, if your name is Ilya Rapin and you want to use 10 years to finish one work, then you probably can and should actually draw in all of the folds. I don't know how uh, Mr. Rapin made his masterworks, but uh, I know that he took a long time and they were masterful, so probably he did draw in everything. But if you want to finish relatively quickly, and particularly if you are thinking of um, if you want to draw comics or fan art or some sort of thing like that it's going to be more stylized it's going to be a much better idea to uh, try to communicate the movement of the body under the clothes clothes so Let's imagine we have here our character is um, doing a weird, weird kind of, you know, maybe a maybe stretching or doing a sort of a kung fu pose, I guess. Who knows? But for some reason, one one arm is um, stretched back, and the other one is stretched forward. This can even be slightly. Um, across the center line of the body not that much but some amount so what's going to happen in this case of course there's going to be pulling here the uh, cloth is going to tense itself along the um, breast muscle maybe some of it even along the um, the flare of the chest here and if we were in the back we would see some a lot of bunching around here and on the other side it is going to tense along the shoulder and uh, along the shoulder blade back here and then you would have some extra material folded uh, on this side so what you might want to communicate in this case would be let's say maybe one line here 
couple of lines here, maybe a little bit of um, bunching there, maybe one line, and then some texture to it. Not uh, not really get stuck get stuck on it, since the the point is to communicate the movement. Well, then let's uh, imagine that the arm is coming this way. What's going to happen here? There's going to be some tension here, some bunching on this side. And uh, what is going to happen here? Uh, mo usually, when you see, you know, uh, stylized uh, comics, comics art, there's going to be maybe some hanging here, and something more for the uh, visuals of it than actually uh, thinking about what the cloth, piece of cloth would actually do. So if it's tense here, it would end up tensing something like this on the other side. So you might want to have a, a bit of a you know raised area here. Something like like this on a sketch level. Mm. So maybe maybe something like this. If there's um, if there are buttons, you might move them as well. They would certainly get uh, get pulled a little bit. Yeah, uh, close reps are hard. Uh, you might notice um, that my quality has taken a, taken a dip uh, as well. It's a partially a question of um, what you practice drawing. I'm very familiar with um, the anatomy, so drawing the body itself is relatively easy for me. But uh, I should practice drawing cloth a lot more. That's actually something that you could probably um, do a relatively good job of. You know, just hanging clothes, doing still lives. You don't get the, the actual movement to it. But uh, if you have objects that you are hanging it on, uh, the way that it drapes is going to be based on the actual uh, items under it, so it hopefully would give some um, would teach you something when you uh, practice doing it. So that is going to be the demo. Now I am going to try to do it for real. So let's check down the opacity quite a lot actually, and then get into drawing the drawing the dress. So, what even is a sundress? We are going to have um, uh, no hanging clothesline, um, hanging neckline here. We are going to have a hanging component, and it's probably going to be bunched at the waist. Probably not really pleated or anything like that, but there is definitely material that has been gathered. And it will no, um, broaden itself as it moves down. This, of course, lets the cloth flap, uh, flap more dramatically and I think that's probably what I'm going to end up drawing here so it's going to be relatively um, no, snug around the waist here and then it's going to dramatically flap up uh, behind here on the torso side here 
is going to be maybe a bit of bunching as well so there's going to be a bit of uh, you know overhang and then i am going to put in some small leaves so, something like this we are going to need some volume we already have the um contours of the body here barely visible let's establish what the length of these components is going to be i think uh, just past the um, shoulder muscle is going to be good and it's going to end up flapping a little bit like this on this side so it's going to be pressed against here and it's going to fall here and do a bit of flapping and on the other side it's going to come around here and around here and on this side it is going to again follow the contour of the body but then on the other side it's going to fall and flap but i don't think any of this is going to be visible so uh, next step let's think about the neck hole since this is a white um neck hole is not not going to be here on the shoulder and it's not going to be here on the neck itself, it's going to be somewhere around here. Since the neck on this other side is going to be, is a bit obscured, it's going to be a bit harder to think of where it's going to start this side, maybe here. And then have some hanging here. Seems like... Uh, an appropriate neckline then we are going to have some material up here of course and we're going to have this seam we're going to have this seam it's going to turn around like this and it is going to stay relatively close to the actual meat here when it comes to clothes the question of how well you can move is a question of how well fitted the um, clothing is to you so if you have a lot of hanging area here this is going to flap around and it's going to pull on your arm if you move your arm so you might think that having looser sleeves would be more comfortable or make it easier to move uh, this is not the case it's actually having extremely tight clothing that is either so extremely well tailored that um, it has exactly the am amount of extra fabric that you need to move yourself this would be the case for something like uh, you know traditional fencing clothes so if you are drawing from imagination and you are, have like a, a nobleman in the 1700s you know, or musketeer or something uh, that would be the way to go so tight around here then maybe some uh, loose flaps around here for for aesthetics and then again tight around the um the rest of the joints so you would end up with tight joint then loose flap uh loose flaps and then tight again and then loose um loose again and then tight again on the um on the rest and this is no surprise that, for example, Landsknechts or other, you know, early modern uh, flamboyant uh, soldiers dressed exactly like this. So they wanted to have a lot of cloth to show that they are successful and rich. But they also had to have their uh, mobility uh, as unhindered um, as possible. We're going to imagine that Inna has a relatively high quality sundress, so, so the armholes are going to be fairly high up on her meat here. And on this side, 
is going to be around um, the top of the shoulder muscle. So it comes up around here. It's going to turn around and it's going to hang a little bit, but not that much. So on this side, we are going to have, um, say, on the stage left, I'm going to use red for this a little bit. Here we are going to have some pretty tight connection between the um, the shirt, shirt and inner and then it's maybe going to flap around here a little bit if uh, at all visible and, uh, up here a little bit but where we can see it it's going to be very static but on the other side uh, it's going to cling to her meat here but uh, the force of the wind is going to blow the other side here and it's going to pivot a little bit because it can't move on this side so we are going to end up with a situation like this so there is going to be more material here and all of these sword hoods are going to connect to points along that side we might even get you know some overlap here so that the um But it has begun to fold in on itself, even. Something like this, even. Seems, um, no. Aesthetically founded. Uh, aesthetically and uh, factually, factually founded to me. So there we have the uh, sleeves, more or less, roughed in. And at this point, comes down to uh, the back here it's not going to be that much material back here i don't think so so let's um, start to think about the waist so there is going to be some um, slack this is not um, some sort of an s m cloth It is going to be clinging to her on this side. It is uh, sundresses are, I think, definitionally made of um, light materials, so they will um, move a lot in the wind, and it will cling to uh, the uh, contour of her body. What is going to happen on the other side? It's going to be protected from the wind a little bit because it is behind her. But around here, it is going to again cling to the body contours. And starting around here, it's going to be able to um, flap around a bit more. Something like this. I think the midpoint, the midpoint is going to be pushed a little bit, but not all that much, since there is not um, a lot of space that it can move into. But then there is going to be some material that is being pressed against the side of the breast here. And then some of it is going to flap on the other side of it there's going to be a bit of a flap on this side as well a lot less it's going to be more pressed on it's going to be pressed on on one side and then have a bit of movement on the other side this is going to be hard uh, to actually volume in but i'm going to uh, do another pass at it so i am not doing that much of an effort to get it right immediately so again here where it starts flapping free we are going to get a bit of a bit of a fold here
and of course it's going to have a bit of a fold here as well coming in from the back side probably going to be a little bit of um you know driven fold here not that much so then we are getting into the dress here I think it's going to be roughly uh, knee length. However, uh, something that we do have to remember is that there is this angle here. So it's going to be bunching up here and it's going to be tensing up around here. And she is uh, sitting on the wall. So there's some interaction going on there as well. So let's rough in a bit of a. Um, bit of a volume here what is the outline of the cloth going to be doing uh, well pretty much the same it's going to be clinging to her body more or less and then the rest of the components are going to it's going to bunch up a bit around here if it went straight, it would end up here. It is not going to go straight since it's uh, being pulled, pulled away somewhere around here. There's going to be some movement. This is something that we'll have to uh, you know, try to communicate at the end. This is uh, very more of a construction line than anything going to flap up around here I think this point is going to end up somewhere around here so it's going to go down here and then we are going to have some curve to it as it moves along the um, on the thigh and then we are going to have uh, let's say this part here uh, it's, it's going to be clamped around here so the parts of the dress that are actually between the sitting here, they are not going to be able to move as much. What are they going to do? Let's throw it from the side. We have a rock and her sitting and it cannot move here, but it is going to fall down. To an extent, the question is how much space is it going to have to fall down? Probably going to end up something like this. A little bit of, you know, flap in this direction uh, towards the camera. So let's start. Uh, let's actually use the blue, um, the red layer for this. It's going to be clamped around here. And after that, it's going to come down here, like this. And this line is going to do the same. And this line is going to do the same. All of it is going to be clamped down under her ass. And they are going to do a variable amount of flapping here. The further apart, further towards the wind they are, the more they are going to flap. And getting back to the blue, we are going to have the back side dropping something like this. Mm. This um, curve here might be a bit on the aggressive side. I'm going to erase it a little bit and uh, look for something like this. I think it, the, um, the dress might even fold on itself a little bit here. So you end up with the point that is going to contact somewhere around here, coming in from further back. And this one coming in somewhere around here. Mm. 
And then we are going to have some that is completely free flapping here. That's uh, going to mess up my ideas from before. It's going to have to come around somewhere here. So I don't think any of the uh, free flapping backside is actually going to be visible. Make the structure here a little bit more aggressive. Then start structuring around here. Going to be pressed on around here. Uh, the interface of where it's it's pressed on and where it starts start flapping is uh, is the most difficult part. It's going to have some sort of a fold to it when it flaps, but. Uh, Maybe something like this, make the um, the gathering action here a little bit more aggressive. All right, let's uh, stop with the clothes for a moment and actually I'm going to group all of this. I appear to have made some sort of a selection that I did not want to do. I just wanted to select. Hmm. Here we are. I think I had my caps lock on or something. It was uh, doing something a bit weird. So this is going to be the clothes demo. Oh, now I had my cap caps lock on. Well, who knows? Something something was up that isn't anymore. This is going to be the hair demo. Hmm. So we want to draw hair. The problem with hair is, of course, that it is it consists of single strands. And if you have seen some of those uh, the older. plush toys that had hair that was made out of, you know, single strand uh, wool string. It just doesn't look good. And it doesn't look good if you want to just draw someone's hair as, as, as single line, lines either. Uh, it probably can look good if you make an extremely good, do an extremely good job at it. But uh, generally, people's hair clumps up. So you have a sort of Let's imagine a character that has a, uh, a bob cut. And there's uh, the hairline. And there is going to be, there are straight bands, and the straight bands have some volume. It's sort of and the way I like to start doing it is sort of, you know, think of the characters as low, low polygon models or something like uh, something from Alone in the Dark or an old Tekken game or things like that. So simplify everything into blocks. If you have, um, you know, the classic rail here, you can get a. Um, Get a bounding box for it, and then you can start drawing into dividing the bounding box. See what um, kind of you know, areas you uh, end up with. And of course, I selected the uh, most difficult um, perspective imaginable. So think of points where a contour line would go. So if you have 
ringlet it's going to curve and it's going to hit this line somewhere then it's going to curve, curl around and hit this line somewhere and hit this line somewhere then hit this line somewhere and then hit that line again somewhere so this keeps keeps on going just draw through everything at the first point you might not even curl it you might just you know draw a spiral with uh, a break line like this and then you might use another color to figure out um, how a different component moves something like this and at this point you would then come back and use your several helping lines to draw an outline so which one is it it might be a great idea to do this in parallel so Draw out one loop of the ringlet, uh, then ink the one loop of the ringlet, and then come back for the next round. Since I can't um, can't really identify, I can't even remember how many uh, how many rolls I wanted to have here. And that's going to be, you know, good enough. There is something that you can uh, identify as as a ringlet here. And then getting back to the example with the with the straight bangs here, what do we want to do with that? let's um, erase it um, a bit here on the top layer so that i can use the lower layers to work on it you might start breaking it down let's say into four components and instead of the components just being uh, bounding boxes you might start giving them some stru internal structure so you might have the internal the central internal line go something like this and the central uh, outer line going like this and then you are going to need some uh, volume side to side so if you want to have a sort of a strand with a cross section like this you are going to need The outline is going to be something like this, and the inline is going to be something like this. And then I'm going to try to do the same with red on the other side. So you will have something here, then a bit here, then a bit here, then a bit here. And in this case, we are not going to need uh, the inner line. We have already gain something that we could describe as a strand of hair uh, for straight bands you don't want them to get um, narrower like this so what's happening here is that it's it's getting narrower it's kind of like the, one of those uh, again like with the ringlet example like a, a stylized clump of hair if you are going to have uh, straight bangs you probably want them to come apart at some point so they are not quite perfectly even but you want them mostly to be following uh, the structure 
So let's say we have a component here and we are going to have a component here. Then we have a component here. There's again a little, little tiny gap there. And at the end, we might want to have some you know, line work that uh, signifies that there are uh, single individual strands here. The scale is a little bit uh, small for this. And let's use the red again. It was uh, pretty successful on the other side. We have a larger gap here, makes the structure look a little bit more dynamic. And we have a downright large gap here. And I am trying to give it a, a sort of um, sort of volume here. Um, but the resolution isn't isn't really uh, large enough for this. I should have drawn this a lot larger. Then what will be helpful again is when you start shading it, think of what part of it would be in shadow and what part would not be. When it comes to shading uh, here, I like to do like a four, uh, four color system for it so that there's... Um, mm, Let's use the uh, normal color color selector. Let's use uh, use a brown. Let's use a use a medium brown as the as the absolute bottom layer. So, which tool is this again? No, it's, it's just a huge uh, hard pencil. Look like, uh, almost like a uh, an airbrush to me. So we can group that up. Then we can add. Um, one layer that is going to be uh, inheritance locked, have some lower lo lower opacity, and this is going to be darker. First, I'm going to fill everything, then erase. You have a a larger area that is um, darker, and then we are going to have a highlight I like to when I'm lazy I like to put this on the same um, same layer and then we are going to have another layer for you know highlights extreme highlights and extreme uh, shadows these are going to be let's turn this into a hard light layer not much of a difference honestly But this way I don't have to actually use the colors, I can just um, with a low opacity and uh, either white or black and it's going to have the desired effect. You know, highlight, strikes of highlight, um, strikes of, of shadow. So you want, you have both, you know, masses, masses that are dark, masses that are light. And then you are going to have some highlights at the edges of um, of these masses. So getting back to this here, if we think that the the light is going to be coming in from behind. behind and to the left. Then that means that a lot of this um, yep, is going to be quite dark. Same here. 
and then the areas that are sort of um, hidden here that will be relatively dark as well. Starting a bit here. Then you are also going to have some highlights on the on the other side. So you're going to have a highlight highlights here, but also along the edge here. Since the edge is going to get some light um, through itself. It would end, end up with both uh, masses and um, details being lit. So, that was the hair demo. Now I am going to get back to the actual project again. So, what kind of hair does Ina have? You know that she has these, um, she has her danglies. They are going to be visible on something, maybe the sketch. Oh, yes. This is going to be sort of, the, this is going to be the layer that we want, um, want to follow for this one. So, the flaps are going to come from under the sun hat, so it has to bend a little bit to ac accommodate. And then we are going to have some straight bangs. So some, some volume for them. They are going to be flapping. Because of the wind, maybe even some of them might even have a you know, dramatic flap here. Maybe one on the in the opposite direction here. <laughs> then we are going to have the, the danglies. As I recall, they get uh, thicker until they reach a maximal thickness, and at that point they start um, coming down again. So we are going to draw them like that. And on the other side, we are going to have the same phenomenon. Get thicker until it reaches a maximal thickness. And then taper down. For the mass of the hair, it is going to attach to the um, to the head. It's going to have some volume to it, and at most, it's going to um, attach to the back of the head here. But any of this hair is not going to be visible, so we can just um, ignore it and concentrate. on the parts that are going to be interacting with the wind. So we are going to have the uh, side here, we are going to have the side here, we're going to have the middle here. And this side is going to be further down, further behind her body, so it's going to have a little bit uh, less of an effect from the from the wind, so there's going to be, I think initially, less curve here, and then it's going to end up something like this, as I um, already worked at earlier, but then the parts, there's going to be a part that really whips around here. We are going to have a curve, something like this for the for the end end of the hair, 
I think that's going to be that's going to be good. Then maybe have some single strands going on on wild advent adventures uh, on this side here for for aesthetic sake. But I'm not going to make the mass of it um, as wild as it was in the uh, initial hair sketch. We more or less have a volume for the uh, bands there. Now we are going to need some sort of a volume uh, for the hair in the back here. As it stands, I have drawn it as it, if it were more or less a textile. I think that the length of it is a bit short. We would like to have a longer fan. So we are going to... How are we going to do it? I think go a bit more, even more aggressive here. Hmm. I'm going to start a new layer for this so I can just uh, just draw. Maybe have it curve around here a little bit. And maybe I will actually have to make it as aggressive back here as I originally thought. A bit of going going back and forth on my on my own uh, designs here. It's going to be. Seems fine. Something like that. Then we need um, to actually need some uh, volume to it. Merge down is Ctrl E. I'm probably going to need that uh, occasionally from now on. So, a new one. What kind of blocks would we like to build this out of? there's going to be a bit of the uh, ear visible here as well so we might actually you know what let's uh, have an extremely short pause are back again I have entered a reference image and here we can check and see that there is actually some um, you know him cut kind of shorter hair on the front here so we are going to throw that in as well there's going to be some here it's going to flap much in the same way that the, the flaps are doing mm, it starts of behind in the head so with that we are going to get a bit of um, you know hair action on this side as well And after that, we uh, actually want to be knee length, so I might have to um, make the hair even longer. 
let's push that one down at this point we are again working with the with the main mass of the hair so we want knee length but it's going to be flapping a little bit so it's going to be somewhere around here and i think this this is the way that we are going to get some you know much desired length to the flap so it's going to be relatively thin around her head here but then The question is, is it going to come in front of or in the back of um, the clothes? The clothes are, they start forward. And they are falling backwards. I think it's going to come on top. But I think we will... Um, We're going to need to push the reference outside again a little bit. I think we are going to want to have the same structure here. Here we have a large flap, and since it is so aggressive, I am going to make it a bit more aggressive here as well, just for you know aesthetic reasons. Hmm. I am stuck thinking about where the here is going to land again. So let's draw. We have the thing again. We have the clothes come here. The head comes around here, and the hair is going to fall down. And I think it's it's going to go down. It's going to go below. So part of it is not going to be visible. We can run it like this. A lot of this is going to be extremely shaded. This is going to go like like this here, I think. A lot of this is going to be in extreme shade, but not um, all of it. And of course, there will uh, I think there will be some gaps in the hair that will will be able to get some um, some highlights inside here. So uh, I think that's probably going to be more or less it for the uh, for the volumes let me draw this one more time This is all here. We have stronger lines here where it's supposed to be visible and weaker lines where it's supposed to be behind something but where we can still uh, make use of the construction lines. So. Hmm. 
Seems fine. So, what do we need at this point? Honestly, the um, the next group is going to be the how to say the actual drawing. I'm going to have some, you know, ink layers, some color layers, and then I am going to have some, oh, is this a group? I don't think it was, some color layers, and maybe some sketch layers. We're going to need to do some sketching on the face. There isn't really a face yet. There's just the um, rough structures. Let's see if this is this is not, of course, not yet um, grayed out. So, what do we want here? I think we want the the eyes to be not quite close, but a little, um, you know, not 100% open. And we want a, a eyebrow that is One one eyebrow, nice and straight like that. Mm. I think with the um, with the wind blowing from this side, it should actually be the other uh, other way around. So the eye that's being affected by the wind should be should be this one. This one would be close. And the eyebrow would be further down on it. Whereas the other side would be more open. And have a sort of a happy the eyebrow to it and we are going to have the dark some structure to the nose here a bit more you know uh, French animation than Japanese but what would the the mouth be doing this scale it's not going to be that uh, detailed anyway so it's you could say it doesn't really matter I think there would be some let's uh, start the red layer some movement in this muscle here so there would be this would be pulled up here this side would be of a neutral smile I think that's probably going to be more or less what I want out of it um, by the time we are done. Turn down the opacity a bit and start trying to ink this a little bit. See with this, at this scale, I think the G pen is going to be relatively good for the uh, detail that we want is there going to be a fair amount of um, detail here uh, 
Again, I am going to group this into outlines and inlines. No, this one is going to be the inline, not the, not the layer inside the outline. And then, let's get, get into it. Turn down the size. Yeah, I think at this scale I can, uh, I can press relatively strongly and still have a controlled uh, line output here. Being able to press strongly is what allows you to make this kind of bold uh, lines. And of course, that is exactly what we want here. We want to have bold lines. Looks extremely good. Uh, I'm pressing the E key to have a um, an eraser that has the exact same. Um, so I can turn my uh, ink brush into an eraser brush so that it still has the exact same. Um, function the same size and opacity and so on as the um, current brush has so it's not quite a perfect replacement for switching to an um, an eraser brush but it's fast you can just uh, press e if I had a lot of buttons on this um, tablet, on the side of the tablet here, uh, I would put the uh, switch eraser button somewhere on there. This uh, box here is the hair, so I'm going to uh, ink the outline of it a bit more jagged, so that it gives uh, the impression of having having some hair there. Yeah, I made a tiny mistake at the end, so I can just uh, roll that back without uh, undoing everything. It's not uh, undo is often very useful, but it's not always what you want to be using. Uh, I seem to have forgotten to give her shoes. Well, I'm going to finish the outline apart from the shoes and then go back to drawing in some shoes. I think this side here is a little bit too meaty, so I'm going to cut it down a little bit here in the in the inking phase.
Here we have an extremely bold and aggressive line. And those are very good for drawing here. Since we, we want it to flow aggressively. Going to be a bit of a gap here. Then I'm going to have to rotate this a bit to give the kind of line that I want. That was almost perfect. Like this. Now we are getting almost to the feet. I think at this point we're going to need to start um, throwing in some extras. I'm going to use the uh, sketch group of the character drawing to draw in some sort of shoes. Uh, I'm going to leave out the extreme platforms that she always has. I don't really like those, and I don't think those are. I don't think anyone would be wearing that kind of shoes while on a lo longer you know, operation, so to say. While out on a promenade, I'm striking, hitting a blank on a, a suitable English word, word now. What we might want to have is... Um, I guess sort of like a... I guess, I guess pump would be a good word for this. You know, some... Something like this. So a low shoe, a low heel, uh, have, has a bit of a structure on the front there. So we can... Take this and move it closer to here. And then I can try to draw something similar here. So we are going to have the tongue area of the shoe is going to be here. The center line comes up to here and the toe box is going to start here. And similarly on the other side. Come up here. The toe box is going to be around here. And the center line is going to be around here. I'm going to add in the borders there as well. And then we are going to have some area for the heel here. I think on this side it's going to have to be a little bit wider. So something like this for the actual toe box.
There has to be some um, slack in the toe box, so the toes end maybe here. Because when you have your foot, when you are uh, stepping on your foot, you have to have enough um, slack in the toe box that you do not hit your uh, toenails into the front of the shoe, even when it is being um, turned like this. So we want to have the toe, uh, front of the toe box, something like this. I think this side is going to end up being relatively flat on the ground. We are going to have some idea of the of the heel. But not that much. And then the toe box. Would it bend in a shoe like this? I don't wear shoes like this, so I don't know. I am going to throw it straight. No, for to be safe uh, on the safe side. Then we are going to have some small amount of heel here. Not that much. Then we are going to have some sole. Looks good. On this side as well, we are going to have some heel here. Then we are going to have some sole here. Something I don't think you can see it anymore over this um, this mess here, but I am going to, you know, I'm going to uh, just use the G pen in red for this. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of the um, of the sole here. And then also a tiny bit of the um, of the heel here. And then we have a bit of a bit of tongue going on here. in the main structure. Something like this, and then of course there is some volume to this, so you will have some extra material here. Turning around here, and we are going to keep the outline rounded. And mostly um, point to the curvature of the shoe here with um, shading. And then we have the heel here. And then we have the sole here. Same on this side, so there's going to be some some volume. And that seems, uh, seems about fine to me. And let's get back to outlining it.
a bit of um hmm. no, I don't think that's quite correct. I want to have a bit of uh, a step where the soul begins, but I don't think that was where I would actually want it to be. This uh, is probably going to be better. Again, a bit of a step here. So, I think that is uh, a complete outline. Yep, looks good. Let's test it out a bit with the with the selection. Works fine. And then let's get to work on the interior lines. Mm-hmm. Looks quite perfect. That seems like a good combination. Then have the flap here, second flap here, and we have the hands. All of this is already relatively well drawn, so I don't have to. Uh, think too much about it while while inking it out. Next time I'm going to have to think about uh, any of this is probably going to be at the uh, coloring and shading level. Okay, I'm going to use this kind of you know curving broad strokes to suggest. There might be some sort of um, strands to the hair. It's going to have an outline at the top of it. And there's going to be an outline for where the um, dangly comes out of. And then let's actually look at the reference a little bit for the danglies. They have a more of a, a banana curve to them. Um, oh. Oh no, there's going to be there's going to be here, here behind here, I think. So there's um, not necessarily yeah, there's there's isn't going to be any Need for an outline out here. There's the dangling. And there's going to be some oh, hanging here. And then there's going to be some here from uh, behind, uh, behind here. That's going to fill. No, not necessarily. I'm going to add in some outline in between here. But that should leave uh, a bit of the sky showing the, uh, between there. I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be correct. So we have the dangly here. More of a banana curve to it. Seems fine. And we have a bit of the ear sticking out here. The hair falling over at the shoulder.
I'm going to add some more motion to this side. Mm. I think I might have to turn the uh, the dangly a little bit thinner again. More like this. And then back to the hand here. Mm -hmm. and then here we are going to have some, um, finally have some actual Cloth interaction to ink. Seems fine. Uh, we'll have to take a look at it um, without all the construction lines at some point. I think that's going to be all right. Neckline. I think the collarbone is going to come out somewhere around here. It's going to be barely visible. This is the scale here is much too small. Doesn't really isn't going to be a lot to the uh, to the face here. I'm not even going to use outlines for more than the you know absolute minimum here. The rest of it is going to come in the um. In the inking, uh, in the coloring, if if at all. Something like. How to draw a closed eye in a couple of pixels. Let's leave it at that for now. I'm going to eventually come back to it anyway. So then back to the shoulder. And we have some So this is where the, the meat is and then we are going to have some Textile here. Not really doing much, to be honest. But it doesn't have to. There's going to be some bunching up around here, actually. So let's uh, add in a couple of, of wrinkles there. It helps uh, keep a an idea of where the shoulder is as well, so a kind of, uh, kind of uh, double function. So then we are going to have a bit of a wrinkle here as well. I think an actual line is going to be here, and then there's going to be a bit of, of, um, of flapping. I think on the other side, 
it's not going to make any sense to start drawing any lines. It's going to be better to work with the with the shading for that. So then the rest of the the waist of the dress. Now the idea is that this this line would connect to somewhere around here, but we don't have to draw it. We might want to have a bit of a, a flap here so that this seems to be connecting to this fold here. Maybe just a little bit, just a little bit here so that it seems that it's um, the flap is going somewhere. But on the other side, I am going to turn it a bit in the other direction so that it but retains the curvature of the of the chest. So I think that's better. We have the knees again. Seems all right. Then let's do the shoes. don't know what happened there um well i know what physically happened i don't know what the software did um my keyboard was dangling over the edge and i hit it with my elbow and it fell over so it must have hit some key combination that caused a uh, a new file to be opened So I think um, the thicker part of the shoe is another thing that we don't want to um, put into the line art. We want to use the shading to show that we are going to need some outline for the sole here. And that's basically it for the shoes. That's it for the shoes, I think. Then we are actually almost done with the inking. I'm going to have some um, wrinkling going on here, since it is uh, tracing over, over her legs. There's going to be some some movement like this i think these are going to look like they belong together relatively well Mm -hmm. Let's finish the outline of the dress. It's going to be like um, 
a bit more built out here. And it's going to connect with that one, and I think we want a separation here, and that should be fine. Should be enough for the uh, lines for the clothes. There was a gap there, but I guess the uh, sensitivity of the selection tool was not enough to be disturbed by that. Uh, interesting. Probably good enough. So let's um, turn the anatomy and extras off for a while. The hair definitely needs more detail. The question is at which level do I want to put it? I'm going to start another inline layer and then use that to put in you know some single strands flapping in the wind that kind of thing some of it of course is going to go on to the uh, into the shading process Well, I think I'm going to I'm going to just um oh that's going to be on the outline so I need another another layer for the outline and then I am going to check this the opacity of this one down a little bit and I am going to draw on top of it to get this, you know, single strand at the fringe here, there is going to be a lot of that. So I would want to have the um, how do I want to actually do this? Now I'm going to use this, this one as a sketch layer, turn it a little bit blue, so that I don't uh, mistake it for a so-called uh, real layer later on. And then I am going to just continue the contours of the uh, mass, mass of the hair. To create this sort of uh, strands here. The same behind here. The 
something like this and then something in between i don't want to have these kinds of um huge huge massive gaps here i want to have some contrast to it I think this is going to work out just fine. Maybe not uh, perfect. Perfectly on model, at least. But uh, it's going to be something. Um, how do I want this um, to end up being inked is another question. I need to have a relatively... Strong and um, and intact outline here. If I want it to be uh, cleanly separated by the selection tool, I guess technically I don't need it to be that cleanly separated. I can I can just have sort of a fuzz uh, fuzzy structure here. And if there's uh, problems with it, I can I can just clean it up. Up, up by hand so I can aggressively uh, scroll this uh, the edge of the hair into being a little bit more frayed Much in the same way that uh, you've seen me scribble at the uh, fur of furry animals. I think that's um, a method and skill that uh, carries over into character art as well. That's looking fine, and then I'm going to... Add in some of these into the inline layer or some dramatic flare and of course some more of it at the point where uh, it gets into into the shading at this point, I'm going to make some erase at the bottom of the art outline here. Since all of the selection tools work just as well for the for groups as they do for layers, I will be able to just use the group outline uh, as uh, my selection. Let's turn off the extras and anatomy for a moment. Seems fine. Yeah, I think this is going to be all right. And then we can get the colors. I'm going to do the colors the way that I usually do. So. There's uh, a base, I guess this is going to be skin. Then there's going to be a dress, shoes, a hat, a hair, and a face, I think. And to begin with, I am going to select the contiguous area of the outline. And it came out more or less perfect. 
and I am going to fill that with white. There doesn't seem to be really anything happening. I wonder why. Oh, I still have the the eraser selected. That's why. So the thing is that the uh, fill function uses the brush that you have selected. So if you have the eraser selected, it's going to fill with erase, which is of course not something that's going to be useful in any way. So. Here we have everything, the whole character in white. Mm, now we can see that I'm going to have to raise a little bit more here. I think there's going to be some on the inlines as well that I want to exactly. There is something in the inlines that I want to erase that I unfortunately thought was on another layer. I think that's going to be that's going to be all right. We don't have any immediately visible problems with the with the field here. So now we can select all of this and then we can go into the uh, the base layer of this of the trace and we are going to do some you know hand hand work here uh, the color is not going to be white it's going to be a deep blue so that we can tell when it is where it is being painted and where it is not being painted I think the selection has been a little bit too fuzzy. Let's check the options here. Fuzziness. Ah, let's not grow the selection. No, that's uh, that's not quite right either. Hmm. So this this selection is what we want to have. I think we can we can just move it around so that we can now use it on this layer and then we will be able to use it on the on the next layer. Yep, looks fine. So now we will uh, know for certain that we always have the same same selection for this um, for masking masking the different uh, color areas here. I'm probably not actually going to use blue as the color for the sundress. Uh, this is, you know, just a, a bold color that will be, that I will immediately notice when it goes o uh, over the lines. Probably going to be 
And so I'm going to play around with it a little bit. Little bit. You can just do that with, um, with digital art. Maybe something like sand color, uh, terracotta. Something in, in that direction. No earth tones. Uh, so contrast with the uh, dark purple. You know, maybe a terracotta color would go well with the uh, orange on the danglis. Seems fine for the for the dress. And let's move on into the shoes. I'm going to use oh, let's use a gray for this. I don't think I want to make it thickeningly lime green like I uh, like my first impulse was to do. So that's the shoes. We are going to need some something on the um, inside the face layer. And be the eyelid here. Probably some shading uh, around the lips. I'm going to have to experiment a little bit. Um, if this, I, I can replace this with a middle uh, gray and turn it into a hard light layer, and then use that as um, as the alpha mask. I think, but not necessarily. If it doesn't work, I'll have to think think of something else. So the nose here, and of course the other eye. I think these are going to be the areas where I want to uh, add in detail uh, into the face that is not going to be a part of just the, uh, shading, the shading the skin. Then the next one is going to be, of course, the hair. I might as well make it sort of um, dark purple to begin with. And let's, uh, this dress doesn't have the flaps in it. I think the flaps are going to be similar color as well. Maybe a little lighter so that I can better tell where the color is and where the line art is.
that's in the uh that's in the line art layer It's getting towards uh, 11 a.m. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to be finished with uh, blocking in the color soon. Um, I would be satis extremely satisfied if I finished coloring and shading today. Then I would have uh, tomorrow, Friday, for some you know finishing touch touches. And then, you know, put up a, a playlist of this on the weekend since I am because of some contractual obligations since I did enable um, which affiliate ship I am not allowed to upload anything to YouTube until 24 hours after stream so of course I've been uh, lazy with that this week technically I could now afternoon today I could upload the first three parts I haven't done it so the way I used to do it was immediately after stream but after enabling the, um, the affiliate system I can't do that anymore it was a bit more more of a hassle so then finally the hat let's use uh, um, you know yellow sandy color for that And thank you for the Godspeed peak. I think it's uh, it's entirely possible that I will have some. I mean, once I am I'm finished blocking in the uh, colors, I'm just going to be able to change the colors of these basic areas at will. So I will be able to flat color it in uh, a minute or two. And then it's a question of how well do I want to detail the shading. I will be able to finish the colors in some sense today. The question is whether it's going to be at a level that I will still be satis satisfied with uh, tomorrow morning. Since we are working at such a small scale here, smaller than necessarily uh, founded, I had the exact same problem with this project as I've had with the uh, Sumerian project uh, that is feature creep. It was originally just supposed to be a, um, a slight, you know, one day project to um, use the technique uh, that I showed on Monday. And it turned into a whole week project, much like the uh, Sumerian project has uh, morphed from just, you know, some sample phrases and general information 
into being a um, recap of the entire uh, of an entire doctoral thesis on the grammar of Sumerian. So here we have the skin layer. Let's see if we can. Uh, on the main canvas, the middle mouse button uh, moves it around. On the um, reference docker, the middle mouse button used to uh, pick colors. So we will have to use an actual tool for it. We can now start a new layer. Um, make it inherit alpha. And then I, I guess we could fill it as well, but I, I just like to use the um, use the uh, ink pen to do this. And I think exactly when you combine the uh, blocking layer and uh, a full layer, they combine into a, a cut like that. So we now have a blocking layer that has the correct color. That is the way that we want to have it. And then we are going to do the same with the dress layer. We are going to play around with the color a little bit. I think it's going to be some sort of sandy color like this, maybe even a little bit wispier, but not save it yet. The shoes are definitely going to be the color of these shoes. So not a huge difference to the neutral gray that I used before. A little bit darker. Merge it down. Uh, the face. I am going to use the skin color again, since this is um, actually. I am going to experiment. What happens if I turn this into a hard light layer? Hmm, seems to still work. However, it appears that that the hard light layer isn't working quite as I expect, or maybe it will refresh at some point. Or maybe the thing is that the um, since the color is not actually neutral gray, that it doesn't actually work as it should. So let's turn it back into a a normal layer. We have a new neutral gray overlaid on top of it. If we combine them, we now have a neutral gray layer for the facial features. And what happens if we turn this into a hard light? For some reason, it does not do what I want it to do. Hmm. Well, in that case, I am going to alpha inherit it into just the plain plain skin color, and we can work work with it uh, as we move on. The hair is going to get a light ray color as well. I'm going to pick this one here and just alpha inherit it everywhere and the hat i think i want a very very slightly whiter color than the than the dress has. So it seems like it has been uh, bought to go with this dress, but it's not a part of a set. So that's going to be all right. And at this point, we can start adding in some alpha inheritance layers and start to shade. Let's see if we can get um, we can get a shadow color for Ina from the official art. So 
as sometime before i'm just going to put this thing everywhere and i am going to um i'm going to start erasing it now at this point i'm going to actually need my i'm going to need the character we are not going to need the drawing we are going to need the anatomy i think take one take one contain contours yes it does so i am going to duplicate take one and bring it on top here somewhere turn of anatomy turn of uh, keep on copy of take one and it's going to come on top of the drawing we don't want the inks for the hat or the inks at all really what we want is it's really the contours so at this point i'm going to start raising so where we have the the sun is coming in from the from behind here so where we are going to have highlights or at least a lack of shadow is on the fingers uh on the side of the palm here mm, i think this this palm is also going to have relatively little uh, shadow on it But then apart from that, we are actually going to have quite a lot. Of shadow. There's going to be relatively little on the legs here some on this side and here maybe a little bit not really all that much on the edges here let's not uh, use the face overlay at this point there's going to be a little here there's going to be some on the tip of the nose here some on the lips here like this i'm not quite convinced that i want to use this purplish um shadow as the shadow shadow color it seems a bit um unnecessarily dark to me i'm going to see if i can maybe airbrush some what actually are these yeah it's a lot more blue maybe something there isn't really anything that would cause a blue shadow apart from her hair we don't really want that much um, blue anywhere around here. So yeah, I think something like this. I'm going to just you know replace the shadows with a you know a more reddish color and uh, re-erase where needed. I think that's going to be a a better solution.
So actually this this arm is going to have a relatively high amount of um light on it since it's uh, more or less perpendicular to the sun like this so then the side of the face again a bit here on the on the side of the nose not really the top of it some indication of of the lip Maybe some slight indication of the cheekbone here. Maybe less opacity, but a bit more area. Something like that. And then a little bit here, a little bit more here. Very slight amounts here. Mm -hmm. We need to fix things up around here a little bit. Darken it again around here. And around the lips, we don't want it that strongly. So now I'm going to start a another layer for some so the darkest shadows. Let's think about where this is these are going to go. They are going to go on the extreme opposite side. let's um there's something something wrong with uh my creator at the moment i think the now no now the now the hard hard light layer is functioning correctly weird so let's make that a normal layer and then let's make this a hard light layer and then we will be able to add in some you know extreme shadows these are going to be where the sun sun doesn't shine so i will be able to use them to mark out some of the contours there's going to be a bit here there's going to be some here on this plane i am going to remove some here and I'm going to add in some here. So this is, I'm trying to um, communicate the gap between the biceps and the teardrop muscle here. I think that even if, I think that in this, in this uh, light, it would be relatively uh, clearly identifiable, even if Ina is not a muscular character as such. Now this is the uh, positive side of the hard light layer. It allows you to use both uh, additive and uh, subtractive methods while you are drawing. So you can just keep clicking the E button and making things uh, lighter. Either lighter or darker. I think I need a bit more of an extreme dark here. Something something like this. A bit cut down on the contour here. That's maybe a little bit more, a little bit too extreme. We want to have a contrast between them, but not too much. Then moving on into the legs, we are going to have um, some extreme shadow between the legs, of course.
sort of contouring the knee here, I think. Uh, under the under the dress here. On the underside here, I think as well. Maybe a relatively um, strong line here, since the leg is relatively aggressively turned into into the light. So then under here, so this is a way to add some three dimensionality that you have shadows behind objects. A bit less opacity, but a bit larger brush. Push it around here. I think she's going to end up looking kind of reddish. I might have to uh, fiddle with the with the colors at the end, or just uh, you know say that she's uh, sunburned. That's going to be fine, fine as well, I think. Then we are going to have some shadow here under the hat behind the nose and under the cheekbone here probably on the under the eye definitely some up here a bit under here, perhaps. down a bit on the contrast here the shadow is where i want it to be but it's uh, a bit more a bit too strong in places a bit of highlight here for the for the filter so the uh, the gap under the nose some more a bit more aggressively on this side of it. It's uh, a bit too big. The problem is that um, at the scale that we are working at, we're talking about you know, parts of a pixel anyway. We're just going to have to leave it uh, very suggested. I think that's going to be fine for the for the body for now. Then we might want to add in some Maybe turn this into a hard light layer as well. Have some um, extreme highlights. Maybe with a smaller brush. Add, try to add some uh, texture. At the same time,
No, no, if I uh, check down the opacity of the shadow layers, it's probably going to, yeah, it's going to, everything is going to turn, um, turn out much, much more neutral. I think we also need some small extreme shadows up here, particularly for the fingers. Give her hands some texture here. I think I'm going to need a smaller, smaller brush. Perhaps uh, not the bundle brush. I might want to use the use the hard brush. Nope. At least not with this op opacity. Not really with that opacity either. Yeah, that's looking looking much better. I want to add in some of the you know uh, muscular and and bone separation lines here, but I don't want to over um, make them overblown. We want some you know tendon lines here. But not enough for it to be um, immediately visible what's going on. A bit of muscle separation. But not an absurd amount. So, that's probably going to be fine for the main body. Then we have the press here. I'm going to merge this do this with the hard light again And when I fill it with a neutral gray, nothing should happen. And nothing has happened. It might be something like that the hard light layer has to be on top of a normal layer for it to work as a hard light layer. That would explain why the face didn't want to work as I, as I expected. Well, then it is time to Once again, shade everything and then start erasing it. So where are we going to have high amounts of light? On the shoulders here. Those are sort of pointed towards the sun. And we are going to get some ambient light on this side as well. And on this side. There's going to be some extra contouring here uh, in the chest. Once we get to that, um, once we get to the extreme shadow point, I don't think it's going to be all that useful to work on it at this point.
So a lot more of this here is going to be in the light since it's turning away. Honestly, I might turn down the opacity on this a little bit, since it's it's the you know normal normal shadow layer in any case. Give it a bit of the razor on this side. All right, seems fine. Then I'm going to put in some more. Uh, extreme shadows so where are we going where are we going to have the absolute darkest shadows one place is going to be here there's absolutely no light going on in there then we have some you no know, form here there's going to be quite uh, very little coming down here behind this um the sleeve quite a small amount here in between the um the folds as well We are going to have a shadow of the of the arm here. And we are going to keep having the shadow of the arm somehow across the body here. I'm going to start with the let's say the normal normal extreme shadows first. Because this is Folding away is going to be a greater shadow under it. Same on this side. I'm going to have a bit of a more extreme shadow here in the middle to begin with. It's, it's, it's generally away. Let's get back to the easy ones. An obvious extreme shadow is going to be in here. There's going to there is going to be some of it up here on the body, but I I think I am uh, overdoing it here. I'm just going to. Erase all of this. I'm going to need some sort of um, let's say a medium um, medium shadow layer that's not going to be as um, as repressive as, as this one is. So have a general sense of more shadow on this side. Hmm. 
Mm. And the folds, um, as I expected, the, the clothes are extremely difficult to sh shade as well as draw. I think I'm going to cut down on the extreme shadows around here and only keep them for the um, for the areas that are actually pointed over. This is the basic, basic color layer. This is the darkening layer. So if I I want to have some you no know, extra shadow behind these folds here. Very specifically behind, I want to have this uh, have a relatively clear contour between which parts are on top and which parts are not. Right at the appropriate zoom level, I think that's uh, that's looking all right. Could be much worse. Then getting into the shoes. There's a keyboard shortcut for this, it's F3. I'm going to have to remember that. So, where do we want to have highlights on these dark shoes? On top of here is one place, on top of here is another place. And here we are going to give it some volume. by highlighting this area here. So, uh, on the other side, we are going to have a lot more light since it is rotated into into the light. On the other side, we are going to have a bit of a darker area here. And on this side, we are going to have a darker area here, since it is entering the shadow of the leg. We might want to have a bit of, um, you know, shadowing for contour here. I think that's looking good. Uh, let's save the face for last, since it's going to have a, a bit of a special taste to it. So, once again, let's turn this into a hard light. Fill it with neutral gray. I might as well copy it at this point. So, let's find a, a dark area. From the reference image, fill everything with the dark color, and then start thinking about where we might have some highlights. 
And while we are at it, I think I think there's a bit of a, a gap there as well. We might uh, we might want some hair color here. We might some want some hair color here, particularly. Here and here and maybe even here. Down here as well. No. Down here. We have some need of some fixing the um fixing work here. That's probably going to be fine. Now we can get back to looking for highlights. There's going to be some here, not a lot, because this is going to be under the uh, under the brim of the hat. And there's going to be some in here. A little bit behind here again not too much since it is going to be under here in general this is going to be a fairly you know uh, dramatically shaded image since the um since the sun is has to has to be in the south and this uh location is on a southern coast Then we can maybe start getting some larger highlights. Huh? Wrong way around. Now we are on, on a race. We're going to get a larger uh, lit area around here. But on the flip side, we are going to have a, a bit of an extreme uh, dark area in the on the inside of that there. So we are going to have a bit of um, highlight here and then along the fringes There's going to be some environmental light, if nothing else going on in there. Then the next one is going to be the extreme shadow, which I would like to have here. And then we are going to start adding in some, um, some strands. Now this is supposed to be a highlight layer as well, a hard light. If we use some quite thin, I think maybe two point something. That's a bit too, too uh, far, I think. At this point, I'm going to start in start adding in some, you know, highlight strands. That are going to suggest the idea that there are actual individual strands of hair here. I think I can use the same. Um, same layer to put in some uh, extreme dark strands as well.
or maybe I think the um the hard pencil might actually be a uh, better tool for this this work. Check down the opacity. Yeah, it's going to be much better. So let's see if we can just replace everything. Uh, use opacity 100. Yeah, we can just replace that, that with uh, an absolutely massive gray. And then we can use the hard pencil to add in some highlights and And maximal shadows too. Mm. Now the scale is really turning into a problem here. Maybe I shouldn't shouldn't really be doing it doing it this detailed at this uh, level of detail. Oh my! If it isn't the consequences of my own actions. I think things uh, feature grip once again. I think I can I can work around it somehow. I can it's not going to be bad enough to warrant any sort of um you know panic. You are not going to be looking at it um zoomed this close, I don't think. So I'm just going to scratch it up with these highlights and uh, deep shadows. On the inside here, this is going to suggest an area where there's some um, you know, separation. In the mass of the hair. Well, that seems, I think it's going, probably going to be uh, all right. Then I am going to get another hard light layer and do the same for the shadows. I'm going to keep these separate so that I don't uh, mess them up. Ah, looking good. Thank you. Um, I've been concentrating on the screen for so long that I don't know, I no longer know what this is referring to, but uh, thank you anyway, uh, hopefully all of it. So now I'm going to do the same, same thing, but with, um, with black or white dark. I think I'm going to put this underneath the, um, the highlights so that I can sort of um, underline the highlights with the extreme dark areas. Mm, might as well make it almost almost entirely black.
uh, coming back to the appropriate zoom level, I think that uh, the hair is looking quite nice. At this point, we are going to need... Um, I might as well start a new group for the danglies. They are going to need uh, quite a lot of their own own work separate from the from the other ones. I'm going to give it a orange base layer, although at the top, of course, it is it is purple. I think. I think I am going to just separate it entirely and then I'm going to shade it uh, purple at the top and and orange at the bottom. This. Ah. this is the dangly, this is also the dangly. So, here we have the danglies blocked up. And then I can use... this here to fill up most of it then you know maybe use the the airbrush as an eraser so that we get a less harsh uh, layer to it. So, I think the next one can be a hard light layer. And then we can copy that. These areas are going to be relatively dark. Maybe give it a little bit of a highlight on this side. Give it some some form with the shadows. Like that. And the eternal question, are the danglies uh, moist all over or are they just moist at the tips here? I'm going to assume that the danglies are moist all over, so I'm not going to shade them as if they were hair. I'm going to shade them as a sort of diffuse. I know uh, uh, the opposite of that, a reflecting, reflecting substance. A bit more, more like a liquid than here. Mm, they might also have some you know oily dark areas to them. I'm going to give them some. And certainly under the brim of the hat is going to be quite dark. Um, there might be a little bit too much of the highlight here. I am going to whittle away at it a bit. Huh? That seems fine. Let's save manually. And at this point, we are at the hat. 
we just need the hat and um, to work some on the on the face and then it's technically going, going to be the first take is going to be finished so what do we want let's turn this into a hard layer hard light layer once again Duplicate it while it's still empty, and then get to work once again. We want highlights around there. It's still going to be twisted over a little bit down here so I am going to give it some some shadow in here and of course here where it is twisted over it is going to have as close to a, to a uh, maximum shadow as it can the bowl here is going to be quite bright since it is actually in uh, in the in the sun and honestly I think that's probably it for shading the hat Seems fine. Manual save again. I am going to need to uh, texture this a little bit, but I'm going to do it as a part of the finishing up process for tomorrow. Like I'm going to have to clean clean up the uh, blocking layer here and maybe add some some more texture down to the city and add the pillar uh, the uh, the clouds and things like that. So there's uh, there's going to be plenty to do tomorrow. What do we do with this? It is a hard light, but it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So it's not, not really useful. We can merge these. And... Uh, Let's just ignore it for now. Let's work work on everything as if there wasn't anything like that here. And there isn't really any, any lipstick color, but the lips are slightly pink, naturally. So let's check that this is a... We want this to be a hard light. Mm, we can't have it be a hard light layer. Apparently. Or maybe, maybe we just have to put this on top of the skin here. It works as a hard light layer here, but will it work uh, for layer inheritance? No, it will not. So this um, this plan is a failure. There isn't going to be any point to using that. So let's just um, work on this layer. So we are going to need to use some absolute color values. So let's take uh, pink here. Bit more of an orange, honestly. This is more of a pink. We don't want to make it absurdly pink. We might want to have a bit of shadow here in a sort of a pinkish color. So that... No, that's too strong. Let's check down the opacity. We want it to pop a little bit, but not too much. Another classic, classic problem. We are going to actually need some plain white for the eye. Uh, 
And after that, we can use this as a, as a layer inheritance thing and make sure that we can freely paint on there. That's going to be a violet. Yes, it is going to be a violet. We can take something like this, add another layer underneath it, make it a bit darker. So we can get a sort of an understated outline for this. And on top of it, we are going to need um, another small you know, pupil area. And then we are going to need some highlights. These are going to be better made with the hard um, pencil again, I think. I'm not really feeling it here. It's going to be barely visible by the time that you're zoomed out, of course. I still get the feeling that it's a bit, uh, it's a bit too, comes out uh, a bit too strongly. I think it might, um, might come down to the, uh, the line work. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to erase the underside here and then it doesn't have to be that large we can do some diffuse diffuse erasing here and since everything here is connected to this layer when we erase that layer, it uh, all of the other things disappear as well. And then we can re-add a sort of um, you know blackish component up here. That blob there is still. Um, in the line line art layer, so let's remove that. So there we have the eye. I'm going to do some shading on the on the closed eye here, but uh, not all that much. I don't think. Very little, if any, of this is going to be visible by the time you are zoomed out enough. No, fix touch-ups on the on the face here. That's pretty much all that's going to happen at this point. Let's check it out a little bit. Turn the opacity. As you see at the point where we have where we are entirely zoomed out so that the entire drawing is visible, I don't think any of the uh, weaknesses of the character drawing are going to uh, come forth. What we might want to have is a bit more strength on the shadows on the chest, but. Uh, not necessarily it's going to be the the side that gets the less um gets less attention anyway so i think that's it for today time to manually save once again time to close the uh, i would have said time to close the recording but unfortunately at, at here's that um when my keyboard fell down the recording ended on its own so i'm going to have to export the word from which and cut it around a little bit for the uh, youtube archive that's going to be a bit extra work but not a problem so thank you to everyone watching in the future on youtube 
I hope you have enjoyed yourself and I hope you have um, learned something. And thanks to everyone uh, watching live, uh, Pig and Robert at least. Uh, thank you for the compliments. I hope you have uh, also enjoyed yourself and learned something. Ah, Pork's channel as well. I don't think I've seen you here before now. Thank you for enjoying as well. And now then it is time for me to try to find someone to raid. I looked up something in advance. Unfortunately, my viewer account is uh, not really functional at the moment. So I don't have a automatic list of people to possibly raid. But of course, paperback channel is always on at this time of day. So I think we're going to go there. So, another visit to paperback's place. And here we go. See you, see some of you around. Uh, I did not crash. Let's go. <laughs> 